All right, good evening, everyone. So tonight's session is on building the chatbot for your assignment four. So here is agenda. Let's see, like, what is a chatbot? Some key terminology. We're going to apply the terminology to build, deploy, and monitor Mr. Bear My chatbot application. Yes, it's another example, and you can receive the JSON file after this. We're going to talk about tips, tricks, best practices, and etc. Okay, there are going to be more advanced examples than what you've seen in the walkthrough, which should help you with your assignment. Okay, now, uh, important your chatbot must be ready two to three days before the assignment is actually due. Why? Because there is an experiment part of the assignment where you're going to be sending the links to your friends, or the testers could be me as well, right? Uh, they have to test the dialogue. And then you're going to be analyzing the data, and I'll show you where it's stored, all right? So uh, two to three days. So let's say assignment is due when? On August, uh, when I'm looking at the calendar, August 8th, right? Make sure that the chatbot is ready by, by uh, August 5th, okay? Because you have to send the link for people to test, right? Uh, make sure IBM Cloud account is up. Do not deactivate. Please do not enter credit card. Well, there should be no reason to enter. There is no uh, hours limit, if you will, right? You can, it's unlimited. Well, the only limit is there is a limit on API calls, but we never discuss it because in the past, none of the students hit one tenth of the limit. None of the students hit one tenth of the limit on API calls. So we, need, we don't need to worry. Okay, but there are no capacity hours, unlike in other assignments. Okay, no capacity hours. Do not put credit card number into your account, please. Do not submit any tickets to IBM unless instructed. Probably you won't. Okay. Now there is a quiz that you need to take in the in the course content. You must earn at least seventy percent. Well, actually, if you count it right, the lowest passing score will be seventy-two because of number of questions. Right. Uh, now remember this: your walkthrough is sequential. What does it mean? Is that Ungraded exercise must be done before you move to the next page. Because, for example, exercise could ask you to create a note, and then on the next page, what's going on is you are asked to add something to that note, right? So you want to, and some of the exercises are evaluation. Okay, so look at this. This is a problem. Teach us how we fix it. So the thing is, you have to do the whole um, document. In the order as it appears, do not skip any pages, okay? Uh, the chatbot that you develop for assignment four must be original work in your interest area. So what do I mean original work? You cannot submit Mr. Cold. You cannot submit Mr. BMI to the grade, okay? You cannot do that. It has to be on your area. For example, in the past, some students did the uh, drink sale, you can do like pizza sale, sandwich sale, that's the sales area. You can do something like doctor appointment reservation or any appointment reservation, you know, like uh, uh, could be something like help desk support, right? Where you answer questions and it gives you like general troubleshooting tips. It could be something like academic advisor, well, things like that, right? I'm just giving an example. It has to be in your interest area, then you cannot submit something that was developed by someone else. You need to do that, okay? Now, um, you need to pay attention to deliverable because you're submitting two files. Your paper will not be graded if your JSON file is not submitted, right? Then remember this, when you delete something, it cannot be undone unless you back up the JSON file. So if you delete the node, there is no undoing, okay? now. There is one of the quotes here. The only mistake you can make is not asking for help. When you're stuck, you need to ask for help, right? 
and I added some pictures for you to remember that. Do not plagiarize, do not procrastinate, and do not enter credit card numbers, okay? Now, this is a must know terminologies, all right? Like, for example, if you ask for help, and I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using this vocabulary in my answer, if you don't know what an intent is, we're going to be talking foreign language, right? If you don't know what dialogue is, you know, you're going to be speaking foreign language. Exactly, you know. So here, this is just a main, I put like the main vocabulary here, all right? You need to know what a slot is. You need to know what a handler is. It's not that you're going to be specifically quizzed on this. No, but you won't be able to understand the documentation and me as well when I help you. I'm going to be using the terminology that is, you know, right? Uh, now, let's see, what is a chatbot? Well, you know that the bot is a general system. It solves specific problem, but it's automatically it's based on certain rules, right? But the chatbot also understands the natural language. It has an intelligence, you know, uh, like for example, you're gonna ask uh, something like, uh, "What is the blood pressure?" and it can return you the uh, articles and something like that. It can return you the text about the blood pressure. Well, before we used to integrate with Watson Discovery Service, which was very interesting. Unfortunately, right now uh, the free plan is not supported, so we're not doing it. But it was very interesting when we used the web crawler to collect the information and you could uh, query that information, okay? So, but at the moment we just hard coding. Okay, so high level, what you're gonna do, you're going to define the application purpose, right? You're gonna define the scenarios and I'm gonna do the scenarios today for the, my sample application. You're gonna use Watson Assistant Service and IBM Cloud to implement, okay? So this service has a dialogue management, natural language functionality. You're gonna train the application, right? Through in, in through testing the defined scenario. You're gonna pretend that you're deploying an application. You're going to monitor the conversation log to train it further. You're gonna identify some limitations and suggest enhancements, okay? That's what you're gonna do for this. It's a just a high level step, so we're gonna dive into details. So what are we gonna do look at today? We have an application called Mr. BMI. User can use that application for numerous reasons. It can be used to estimate the BMI, right? So I'm gonna give, for example, you're gonna be asked to enter your weight in pounds, and uh, you're gonna be asked to enter your height in inches, right? And you're gonna, it, it's going to return the BMI. Uh, the chatbot could also interpret the blood pressure readings. So you're not going to be sitting on a web, right? And um, trying to figure out how to calculate, right? You can just access this 24 7. It's just an example available 24 7. And also, the, another thing is that um, the, the answers are consistent. So, for example, if I enter blood pressure 120 over 80, I get that it's normal. Then uh, someone else, for example, Mark, right? Sorry to pick on you, but Mark enters the same blood pressure and the chatbot is also gonna say it's normal, right? So that's a consistency. Uh, the conversation is gonna start with greeting the user, right? And the answers are consistent, but the thing is to answer new questions, the application needs training. For example, if my application not trained on CPR, it will not be able to answer what CPR is. So basically what we have here, we have doctor office and we have three doctors and at different time, different doctor on duty, right? So maybe I should show you first. So there are three doctors here, Mr. Monitor, works at, at 12 a.m. to 10 a.m. From 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., we have missed cystoscope. And then here, from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m., Mr. BMI. So that's a doctor on duty, right? So there is something going on. It's using 
some type of system entity to check the time, right? You have to use system entity in the assignment. So here I'm playing around with the time. Depending on the time, it's gonna show different greeting and different picture. Like for example, for example, Caesars, that was started earlier today. Caesars, my name is Miss Caesars Cop. Let's get started. How may I help you? And here I see the menu, right? I launched it several hours earlier. Now I'm going to refresh. I'm going to see different doctor on duty, right? Because it has to do with the time, right? Click here. Is this, that's a preview. This is a Mr. BMI. How may I help you, right? So we have several scenarios. The first scenario, I can select estimate BMI, okay? So it's asking me for my height in inches, right? And I can enter 60 inches. And also I can type the word 60. It's gonna recognize, okay? All right. So now it's gonna be asking me how many pounds I weigh, right? I, I can enter something like this, right? I enter how much I weigh, and it's gonna give me my BMI. It's, it says healthy weight, see? Okay, that's the first scenario. The first scenario here is this. The user selects what estimate BMI, then it's gonna ask your user for height in inches, right? But if I enter something like an invalid number, it's gonna ask me again, okay? It will attempt to recognize the number, right? So I'm gonna refresh now. Let's look at another scenario here. Okay, I have to click here. Next scenario is this. I, I'm not sure what's BMI. I can ask him here. And it's gonna show me this picture. It's gonna show me the explanation in the picture, okay? Then if it shows the menu again. I can select something else that I want in this case, okay? Well, here, this is hard coded, but Few semesters ago, we could use Watson Discovery, where it would do the web crawler. Then, when you ask what's BMI, it could give you a set of articles relevant to your question. Okay, we did that before, but right now, unfortunately, no longer available. But we used to use Watson Discovery, which was very interesting, right? So just know it for the purpose of answering one of your questions. You can have some kind of like a repository with document, right? Or you can have a web crawler rather. It's even better where it will refresh. It will do the search for you on a topic, right? So that's one scenario. Another scenario could be this, my blood pressure, right? So now enter the systolic reading. Let's say I enter something wrong, right? I enter the word table. It does not recognize the number. See, here it is. This is another example of system entity. It's trying to read the number from my input. Okay. Well, I can type this now. Um, 20, right? It's supposed to pick up. It's supposed to pick up the numbers written in words. Okay. Now it's asking me for the diastolic. That's a low reading. I'm going to put it 80. Okay. Now it's going to give me a message, right? See this? It tells me your blood pressure is normal. Now it's asking me what do you want to do next, right? I want to email the information. This is a little bit tricky here. Please enter your email address. I can type. It's just going to check. It's not going to check if it's correct email, but it's just going to check if email address follows the pattern, okay? So there we go. Jesus, it picks up because it's looking for an X symbol and it's looking for the dot com, right? So this is, the, it's using regular expressions here, all right? Now, how may I help you? Here, I can say I want to exit. What's gonna happen now? Uh-huh, do you see this? It's displaying the day of the week in a message. Where does that come from? Well, it's a, it's a system entity date. Right, it's extracting. We can extract the day of the week from the date, right? There we go. See that? So I showed you some scenarios. 
Another thing is this. Uh, suppose that I want information to be emailed to me, right? So I'm going to select this, email me the information, and I'm going to type something incorrect, XXX. It's going to ask me to enter it again. I'm going to type something incorrect again, right? It's going to ask me again. Watch what's going to happen now. I entered incorrectly three times. Jesus, it's giving me this message, and that's it. Okay, so you have to have a way to break the cycle. You know what I'm saying? This is just an example. You have, you could have a counter. It could ask you something three times. Once the counter, you know, reaches three attempts, that's it. You know, it exits the conversation. You can do that. See? Also, what you could do is this. This is my blood pressure. It's going to ask you to enter the reading, right? And what if I don't want to share this information? I can click on exit and it's going to take me to the goodbye. See, this is called handler. When you are switching topics, Jesus, it just says, sounds like you want to quit, and then that's it, you know? Okay? Now, Jesus, take a look. This message, right, this variable message, and the other goodbye message. Same thing, but it's worded differently, right? So what is this? This is response variation. The same thing for a phrase differently. Because you don't want the chatbot to repeat itself, right? You want it to sound more like human, all right? So we talked about the scenarios, right? And I just, here, I just spelled it out for you. User selects estimate BMI, the application prompts to enter height in inches and weight in pounds. So you have to do this. You have to describe the scenarios like this, okay? And number in the input can be written as text. See, and also there's an example. And the application is going to calculate the, this is a BMI. It's going to calculate the BMI for you and give you recommendation based on what the result is. This one, this is just the blood pressure. Another scenario is this here. If your blood pressure if your systolic reading is greater than 180 or diastolic reading is greater than 120, the conversation is going to end and you will be advised to go to the emergency room. It's one of the scenarios here. Okay, what you're doing does not have to be this complex. The complexity of this chatbot was growing over time as I was adding things to answer questions. Okay. Now, uh, this is another scenario explained. And again, this is hard coded in this case, but semesters ago, we could use the discovery service. I loved it. It was pulling, it was pulling a set of articles related to the topic. And it was updating the repository. You could specify the frequency, right? Okay. This is email me the information. It's trying to read the email from user's input, it's using the regular expression, right? So, and if, if what does it mean valid email? It, it's not gonna attempt to send an email, but email is in a valid format, if you will, okay? Then you're gonna see the confirmation message, right? Okay. This is just exit scenarios. If it's a weekend, it's gonna show you Thanks for using BMI application. Have a nice weekend, right? This is a for hypertension crisis, right? It's a different message. And this is just have a nice Monday, you know? Well, in this case, I took the screenshot on Monday. That's why I chose Monday, okay? Now, this one is just how the flow diagram looks like. Everybody should have access to Visio. Because your student email account comes with application, and there is a video application on your student email, and you may save the diagram to the, I believe it's, a, you know, to the drive, online drive. You may save it there, and then just uh, whatever, take a screenshot, whatever it works for you to submit, right? Well, just the diagram, it's a conversation flow. It starts. The doctor welcome displays the menu. 
then you're doing it based on different selections from the menu. So you don't want the chatbot to say, how can I help you? Because as a user, I don't know what it, what, what my options, right? So that's why you want to use the options uh, control. That way, it's a chatbot, kind of like the user knows what chatbot might expect. You want to use a drop down like I showed you, right? See, the thing is what you did in the walkthrough just to help you get started. But if you want to do really well on assignment, you have to do something like the chatbot does an introduction. Perhaps you have a picture, then you have a drop down with the options, right? It's much easier. The relevancy of responses improves because you are likely to select from the drop down, right? Okay. So what you do is you need to create a new skill. It was also known as a workspace in some documentation. And speaking of the skills, let's go back to the Watson here. This is what you will have to do. Uh, to submit this, this is a download. This is download. This here will download the JSON file, right? This is a JSON file that you will need to submit. Okay, I'm just showing you how to do that. This is a to submit, but when you start, right, when you create skill, you're just gonna go create, right? And you choose the skill, the dialogue, and you start from scratch, right? I'm gonna give you Mr. BMI. I'm gonna give it to you. So if you want to play around, what you'll need to do is you're gonna create a dialogue skill, you're gonna click next. But instead of create skill, you're gonna do upload skill. Then here you're gonna select the file, right? So you're gonna get the file for Mr. BMI and you're gonna go upload skill and you're gonna select the file, okay? This is what you're gonna do and then click upload. This is what you will do to play around with uh, the file. You're gonna get the file, right? Let's close that. So this is a skill. This is called a skill. Okay, this is also known as a workspace, and I leave it to assistant. I'll show you that too. All right, so what inside in the skill? Oops, inside the skills, you have what intent and the entity, right? Intent describes something that you want to do, it's an action, right? For example, explain it to me, right? Explain is an intent. Uh, explain and the email to me goodbye. This is the intent, and when you do something, and an entity it qualifies the intent. For example, explain me what about the blood pressure, explain me the BMI, right? Another example would be turn on, turn on will be action, right? But entity is going to be something like what can you turn on lights, radio, air conditioning, you know. Something like that, right? Those are going to be the, the entities, right? So just make sure you understand the difference between intent and entity. Uh, to create new intent, to create new intent, you can do it manually or you can, you are asked to upload some of them from file. Otherwise, your walkthrough is going to be 100 pages long. Okay? You don't want that. So. Uh, I just, what I did was I listed my intents here. You will have to do it like this for your assignment. You're going to list your intents. You're going to explain what your entities are, right? And the email is a pattern entity. So if I go and if I looked at it here, okay, so I'm going to go to my skill, click here. If I go to my entities, right, I have an entity called email. And what what is this? It's a pattern, right? It's a valid email pattern. Uh, there could be more than one pattern. For example, if I have a phone number, I could have local phone number and I could have an international phone number. I can have two expressions, right? So here it is, right? I have just one value and this is a pattern. The value is what? Valid email and that's a pattern. Now here, I took it from documentation, this is fine. This is called what code reuse. Taking those little expressions from documentation is encouraged. 
This is code reused, okay? I'm not taking somebody's chat button, submitting it. I'm just using this expression, which is perfect. All right, so you can do pattern entity. You can do email, you can do phone number. You can do something like a four digit pin, something like that, you know, just an example. And this is just a, a regular entity. See this? Values, blood pressure, and this is a BMI, that's topic, right? And the topics are blood pressure and BMI. Entity topic, it qualifies, it explains, right? And in here, I just put the synonyms, okay? So this is what you'll need to do. And you've got, remember this, there are two types of entities, user entities and system entities. System entities are built in, for example, we are using timing here. We are using the numbers, right? I showed you where and we're using the date. If you are not using percentage and currency, we're not gonna turn them on, right? We only turn on what we use, okay? So let's go back here. So entities, I, I explained that there are two types, right? You cannot add system entities manually, right? You can just reuse them. The name starts with SYS, they're pre-built, so they're not editable and you cannot export them, okay? You can use them across multiple skills, but when you export, you don't, you, you, they are not exportable, okay? So for this one, we're using system time, system date, and system number. We're using those three in this example, okay? So here, just to review, you can add user entities manually or you can import the files. It's a review, nothing else. Then you're gonna build the dialogue. Remember, the first note in the dialogue must be the welcome note. And the last note of the dialogue must be anything else note. What it's gonna do when the user input is read, it's gonna check each note has an entry condition. It's gonna go starting from the top note and check if the condition is met. Anything else note is gets triggered if nothing up above it is met. You know what I'm saying? Like if I say, for example, suppose that I say email me, it's gonna check. Welcome, is it, is it the first uh, interaction? No, then it's gonna go back in here. Does it recognize email me intent? Yes, then it's gonna go into this node and it's gonna, it's gonna process what's in there, okay? And so just understand. There are different types of responses. Uh, one thing missing here is the video. Text option, files, image, and video, okay? Uh, so basically there is a condition, then there is a response, and then what should we do next? We wait for user input, or we go to another dialogue node, et cetera, right? So that's, that's part of it, what we're gonna do next, right? Like, for example, this is the welcome note, and let me show you what's going on in the welcome note. Here's the dialogue. This is the welcome note. Take a look at this. Well, this is what I'm doing. Do you remember we talked about the date? So, if right now is before 10 a.m., but the skier is going to do between midnight and 10 a.m., that's what it's going to do, then we're going to do these steps in this image. If now it's after 5 p.m., so it's gonna go without 5 p.m. After, after 5 p.m., but before midnight, right? It's gonna do that. But anything else, look, important. This is not anything else known. In this case, anything else means right now it's not before 10 a.m. and not after 5 p.m. That's what it means. This is a military time, okay? 5 p.m. is 17. All right, that's what it's doing. Depending on the time, I want to show different text and different image. So I'm gonna click in here, watch. So it's here, now before, right? This is a text response. I have response variations. I don't want the chatbot to repeat itself. So I have this variation. Oops, come on. After this, I have what image? You cannot copy and paste the image. You must specify the image URL or line, like robot.gpg. Uh, it was brought to my attention that the image in a, in a 
voxel no longer available, well, you can use another image. It does not matter. The point is to show you how to use an image in the chatbot, okay? You can use an image. And then if you want to use a video, you would just specify the video URL, right? Should be simple, okay? So this is just the conditional response. Depending on the time, it shows a different text and different picture. Then it's gonna go to where? Main menu. So this is the main menu. Now, this is what is the child node, right? So it will go here. Uh, what is this? This is just gonna read the day of the week in it. Uh, this is attempt for some reason I'm doing it here, but for the email where I'm asking user for an email, I'm gonna try and I don't want to ask more than three times. So for some reason I defined this here. Not sure why I did it, but well, you know. Now, what is this? This is actual response type. So basically, what what is this? This is a label. Label is what I see as a user. Value is an intent that gets triggered when the option is selected. I have an intent called explain BMI, right? So this is the intent that's gonna be triggered when I select what is BMI option. When I select my blood pressure option, so see, see this is my blood pressure option. This is what I see. This is label is how it's displayed to me. Blood pressure here, this is an intent that actually get fires when I select this option. See this? At exit, it's gonna fire the goodbye intent. Email me the information, it's gonna trigger the email me intent, okay? So this, this is how it's done. And here in this case, it's waiting for reply. When I reply, it's gonna trigger the intent, right? It's gonna go through all notes. It's gonna say, okay, well, is it the beginning of the conversation? No, skip. Is it email me? It's gonna check. If I didn't select email me, it's gonna skip, etc. But if I enter something that it does not recognize, the control is gonna go to anything else, okay? Well, just make sure that you got that part. I showed you this. Well, this is just the implementation of the explained blood pressure. Well, which, let me see, what is this? No, that's a, oh, that's an explain. So what I did here, this is you can group nodes. The folder allows you to collapse the set of nodes, expand collapse. In this case, it's just an explanation for specific topic. So I want to be able to expand and collapse, okay? Here, what it does is just uh, explain, right? So it's here, this thing, this whole folder is triggered when intent, when explained intent is identified in a conversation, right? When the, when the explained intent is triggered, right? It activates this folder. Then it's gonna go to this folder. It's gonna check, okay. The intent is explained, but also entity has a topic, right? You also have a topic entity and the value of the topic is BMI, right? It's gonna identify this in a user input. Then it's gonna show this stuff, right? Any of this, I have three variations and it's gonna show the picture, okay? And after that, it's gonna go to the main menu. It's going to this one right here. I specified explicitly to show the menu, right? Then there is another one, explain me, but here it's a little bit different, okay? It's gonna show different, uh, because because it's a different entity, okay? See this, it recognizes different entity over here, blood pressure. It, well, actually the same entity topic, but different entity value. Right, the other one was entity value BMI. This one is a blood pressure, okay? Now let's go back to the slides. Harder part, well, this is just the image, right? I showed you how to do the images. Uh, I showed you the options, right? The text is what I see, 
and the value is what actually gets called when I select the text. Okay, so this is just next one is reading the numbers. Let's look at the, the, the blood pressure here. So is this one blood pressure readings? Well, what it's doing is that it recognized the blood pressure, but not explained, but just the blood pressure, okay? What is it doing here? It's trying to read a number from the input. It's gonna check. Is there is a number in my input, right? Then it's gonna store the number in a systolic variable, right? If the number is not recognized, it's going to ask you to re-enter it, okay? Then after this, it's going to ask for diastolic, right? It's checking for a number. But let's take a look at this here. Well, it's going to see, it's going to ask for the high reading, right? It's going to keep on asking until you, what, enter. But also, I have the handler. For example, I can say if if it recognizes something like explain, right? If I, for example, I keep on entering, I start with entering the readings and then I say, wait a minute, explain me. Then it's gonna show this message and get back to where I was. Jesus, then if I want to quit, I can enter goodbye and it will quit, see? I should be able to somehow stop the conversation, right? So let's see, we can do, this is how you're gonna troubleshoot when you work on it. You're gonna use try it, right? Then you're gonna select an option. Let's say I want to do my blood pressure, okay? Before I did anything, I'm gonna go to manage context. I'm gonna see what I have here. Well, zero attempts, but I use it for something else. Today is Thursday, right? And the time zone, I don't have anything, right? Yeah. So now I'm going to close. I'm going to go back here. It's asking me to enter the blood pressure. And I'm going to put something like 135. Look what's going to happen. It recognizes the number in my input. And if I go to context, it's added systolic. You want to make sure. So you have to test it. You need to check what happens actually when you enter the values. Right? Now, it's asking me to enter another one. And let's suppose that I put something like explain, right? It's gonna explain me. It's gonna tell me blood pressure is a strength at which, at which the blood is pushing the vessels, right? And now it's gonna ask me again to enter the diastolic reading. I can enter exit and it will end the conversation or I can go ahead and enter my, uh, diastolic reading, right? So it's gonna say the blood pressure is elevated in this case, and it says adopt the healthy lifestyle. And if I make some changes, if I made some changes, I did not like something, I go to make changes to implementation, you would need to click on clear and restart the testing all over, okay? If you made some changes, you fix the issue, and you want to restart, you have to do, you have to click on clear. Okay, so here I'm reading the numbers. In here, this is doing the calculation, right? So let's click here to see more. Uh, in here, it just checking what you entered and depending on what you entered, it's gonna show the response, right? It's gonna show the response depending on what you entered. Oh, but in this case, right, if it's, Negative, if you enter something like a negative number, then it's a problem, right? Or here, just an example. See this, it's, it's, it's reading this, right? It's saying if systolic is less than 65 or diastolic less than 45, your blood pressure is too low, right? Something like that. There are no calculations in here, but there are calculations in another block where you are doing the estimate BMI. So see here, estimate BMI, it's taking the height and weight, but here, well, this is the calculation. And this is how you output. See that? I want to output the calculation result. So you have to put this little uh, lesson and then a the greater than. See this inside, you have to put the, the question mark 
this is a calculation itself question mark see this is just a format i'm doing the calculation here and i want to display the calculated number okay I'm making calculations of the BMI. And the way it's done is I found this formula somewhere. I mu multiplied the weight is multiplied by 703 and the, divided by the five squared. Okay. It's just a calculation. And it's a conditional response, right? Based on what was entered. And this is just if you want to act it, right? Or something like that. This is just anything else. In here, it just uh, gets triggered if you want to exit. Suddenly, if you want to, if you decide to exit in the middle of conversation, then it's going to display this message. Okay, let's see. Let's do try. Right? And I'm going to select an option. I want to do the, the, the BMI. Right? I mean, no. Yes, estimate BMI. Right? What is your height? I put 60, but then suddenly I type exit, right? I don't want to, perhaps. Maybe I'm not comfortable with giving my weight. I type exit. See? Now it's going to say, sorry, I didn't give you sufficient information to estimate BMI, right? So that's an option here. Anything else, in this case, it's just any, but not above. It's different from anything else node, okay? Please remember that, okay? Uh, well, this is just the email me. Uh, trust me, this thing took me some time to get to work. So uh, this is how you read the value of the uh, pattern entity. It's email.literal. This is just the way to read it, that's a syntax. So feel free to reuse what I'm gonna give you because this takes a little bit of time to get to work. Okay, feel free to reuse this code. Uh, this just shows you how to do the current date. It's now reformat date time and see this when you put the five is, it's gonna take the date, the week, the day of the week completely spelled out. If you put triple E, it's gonna be the abbreviation, okay? Now returns the current date, and I showed you where it's used, right? We're checking, oh, we, what we're doing here, we are displaying the day of the week in a goodbye message, right? So that's what it is, but this is a calculation, see this? That's why you have this opening and close. And because you are, see this, you're displaying, right? So this is how, it, you're storing it in the variable, that's why. Okay. Uh, goodbye note has conditional responses also. It's gonna check the day of the week, right? For Sunday, it's one response. For weekday, it's another response, etc. All right. I showed you what a folder is. You can just expand, collapse the set of notes. This is just the testing scenarios. I'm showing you how I'm testing the chatbot from inside, right? From the uh, trial. This is done this way only for the development. But in general, you have to keep in mind the chartboard testing is ongoing. And we're gonna show you how you see the actual conversation data, I'll show you. But this is just another one, another test, right? It just shows you how the input is being read. Then what you'll need to do is you have to build the virtual assistant, but pay attention here, what you'll do you're gonna go here, see this, my assistant, right? I'm gonna create another one just for you. Look, create assistant. Here, you're gonna say assistant name, right? For example, I want to call it Yelena Helstia. Right? Description is optional. I'm gonna go create assistant. Next, what you have to do is, you have to add the dialogue skill, right? So you're gonna do here a dialogue skill and you're gonna select your dialogue skill. That's it. Very easy, right? And then you're gonna go to preview, right? And this is your preview link. That's it. What I'm, what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna delete because I already created an assistant. I don't want confusion, okay? Delete, delete. 
Okay. Delete. I already created an assistant. I don't want to be confused. So it says here, this is an assistant that I created, right? Well, this is an assistant and it has a dialogue skill. What you will have to do, pay attention here, you're going to click on the preview. This is a link that you're going to send to your friends for the last part of the assignment. This is a link. So you're going to click on copy, right? And then you're going to go and you're going to email this to your friends. This is a link. You're going to email this link to your friend for the testing. Or I can be the tester also. You can use anyone, OK? And you click here, so this is the link, right? This is the link that you're going to send your friends for the testing, right? Just remember that part. You're going to create an assistant. You're going to send the link. But you make sure that your chatbot is ready, right? Of course, you might be making some changes here and there, but you know. All right, so you're gonna add the dialogue skill and you're gonna send that link. You can preview and send that link to your friends, right? So you have a chatbot at least two to three days ready. You're gonna share this link with two to five friends. Well, the more friends, the better, of course. It can be your family members, it could be TA. You're gonna ask each participant to run three to four conversations daily. At the end of the day, you're going to go and check the conversation log, which I'm about to do. And you're going to discuss some necessary changes that you make, right? Like, for example, uh, sometimes I can enter something the chatbot does not recognize. Instead of selecting option, I can say something like calculate. Calculate pressure, whatever. Right, it's not gonna recognize what I'm talking about, right? I did not understand, right? See this? Okay, so sometimes I mistyped something. I want to, when I say calculate pressure, perhaps I wanted to give me something about my blood pressure, right? Let's just say, I'm just making it up. It did not recognize it. So now what I could do is look, this is where you're going to go to look at the conversation data. I'm going to go to skills. I'm going to click on my skill. I'm going to go to the analytics. Analytics, right? And I'm going to click on the overview. What this does, it's going to show me the total number of conversation, average messages per conversation. This is a conversation per day, weak understanding. OK? So this is just, you're going to have two days. You have to have two days, important, okay? And you're going to take the screenshot that shows that you are, you were playing around with it for two days, okay? So this is just the data. And you, you can go to the details here. This shows me which entities were uh, triggered. It's important because you're going to know how the chatbot is being used. So when you do the further development, you're going to know what to focus on, right? For instance, my blood, this is heavily used to, do the, to check the blood pressure. And if I want, I can click on this and I can see the details of the conversation. This is, this is user conversations. I can look at the details and I can check which intents were not recognized well, right? Like see here, calculate pressure. I'm going to open the conversation. Uh, when I say the calculate pressure, it says that I don't understand, right? Well, well, it doesn't recognize my uh, classification. What I could do is I can do show classification, and I can uh, I can select an intent, right? Like, oh, this one is explained blood pressure. We are good, right? But if I go to somewhere, this one, it says calculate the, the pressure. I can find this conversation, right? I can find this conversation and I can make it, I can change the intent. You see this calculate pressure did not recognize any intent, but what I could do is I can change it. I can say, okay, I can do, I want to do this, like blood pressure, right? I want to do this and then you save it, okay? You save it. So next time, next day, when the user is going to run the chatbot again, 
right? I'm going to run the chatbot again. When I say calculate pressure, calculate pressure, now the intent is going to be recognized. Oops, it's still not. Well, I would have to look. Oh, because I misspelled it. But the whole idea is that you save, you change the classification of the entity, right? Well, and then it's going to pick up the correct intent. You can do that, see? You can change the, you can change, you open the conversation, right? And then you can look at the entities, right? You can look at the entities. And, and the intents that were triggered when you entered the input. And you can look at the classifications here, see this? Well, and etc. You can change classification, right? So like you enter the synonym, it's not recognized, and you need to change the classification where you want it to be recognized. So you will, you may want to look at some examples of the conversations and discuss it. Then you run experiment for day one, what changes have you made? Experiment for day two, and assume that suppose that pretend you were running it for day three, what else would you change? Right? That's what you have to do. Uh, and you need to share your observation in a paper. Okay, this is just shows you some conversation information, right? And you're going to look at the log and you're going to look at the uh, actual conversations. Uh, this is just some of the documentation you may find helpful, how to work with date and times and on the uh, expressions. You can look at that more details. But this is just, you know, the analysis. This is where you're going to go for. Look at the conversations. Yes, you got the overview page. Then if you click on this, you can look at where intent was exactly used. It's going to give me the conversations where this intent was used. Oh, take a look at it. Now it recognizes it. It tends to recognize it because I trained it. Well, here I trained my chatbot to recognize it. See? So then next time when I enter, it should recognize. See what I'm saying? Well, see, you can look explicitly where a certain entity was used. All right. And weak understanding, it means the chatbot could not fully understand. I can click on weak understanding. Well, in this case, it's XXX. I try to enter email address, invalid email. And here I was, I tried to enter the invalid number. So this is irrelevant, which is good. It's correct. Right. And here I decided to choose to show a newest course, which is OK. Right. Well, then you're asked uh, here we are hard coding input. You're asked for an approach that you could use not to hard code. Well, you could use a web hooks where the uh, chatbot is pulling the information from some URLs. You could use, if, you were, if it was supported, we could use the discovery service, which is a web crawler. It's gonna search through the documents online, build the repository for your topic, right? It was working a few semesters ago. So just, just know there are different ways. You can integrate the service with other services, right? Well, just know that something you can do. Remember the testing is ongoing. Then if you want to, to aim for the higher score, well, you want to make sure that the chatbot is usable. It's not just something like, how can I help you? You want to present a menu of what can be done or like a list of it that can be done, right? Uh, then you want to do more on analysis. You want to explain the limitation. In this case, there is a limitation. I don't support the uh, different metrics, for example. It only takes the height in inches and weight in pounds. Okay, that's one of the limitations. Okay. Uh, well, another limitation, unfortunately, I'm hard coding the, te the text, but the guidelines change, right? So I'm not using the latest and greatest. That's another limitation. Well, that's the thing, you know, you want to do. All right. And the uh, chatbot, they solve specific problem and you have to train it. Like if I enter something like CPR, my chatbot is not trained on instructions for CPR. So it won't provide them for me. Right? Make sense? So now let's see if you have, we have questions. Guys, please ask me questions now. 
Um, questions, please. Any questions? I'm sure that we have them. There is no such a thing as dummy questions. All questions are good questions. Huh? Did I wake you up? <laughs> Anyone, please, questions? No questions? Well, I assume that everybody, well, at least you should have taken the quiz by now. Right, in preparation for this session, this session is more productive if we took the quiz prior to attendance, right? Because you want to be familiar with the vocabulary, right? So, oh, and when you submit, you're going to need to give the preview link also. Both preview link and the JSON file. The instructor will import the JSON file to verify if you actually implemented what was asked. Okay, it will be both. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, let me look at the chat now. Yes, it's a lot of you, but the thing is I try to pick what's not covered in the classroom because the session is supposed to add value to what is in the classroom, right? Should not be just repeat. So uh and I'm going to give you this uh, file. You're going to get the slide and you're going to get this JSON file for you to play with. Okay. Sounds good. Any other comments? Oh, okay. Okay. No worries. Okay. Sure. Anything else before I end the session? So everybody knows you're not going to submit Mr. Cole, you're not going to submit Mr. BMI as much right? Otherwise, professor will have to be grading you later, right? Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. If there are no questions, then we're gonna end the session. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I have a question on. Um, I'm sorry. All right. I have a question on the. Uh, the welcome of a child node for the welcome. If you click, if you can click on it, and uh, I would okay. Like, yeah. Um, and yeah, dialogue. Yes, and uh, yeah, yeah, child, yeah, child node. Could you could you go to a JSON file because we have to do some updates on the uh, on the name, the JSON. Go to the, um. There's another small thing. If you go down to if assistant recognize true i don't know how you did yours uh there's a way uh, another way there's three that that you can click we can have a json file yes that one oh, click on that oh, yes so uh, mine is different i don't know how to um modify the code to have the exact output well, on that thing I, I couldn't I couldn't hear you. I was losing your Okay. Right now you can do this. You can do this. And it will be faster for you. It will generate the code for you. Okay. So here, this is what you have to do. This is what I did in the session. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sitting with my computer. I'm sitting with my phone. They are sitting with them and they can do it anymore, right? Please check your volume. We can barely hear you. It wasn't like this all the time. Okay? Yeah, your volume, you have a problem. Your volume has a problem. We couldn't hear you. Oh, the whole volume was on. Yeah. 
Is it possible? No, we cannot no. hear you. Why not? Why nobody is Do you hear me now? Yeah, now it's okay. Okay, so uh, this year in your school, you can do it in the first day. Oops. You can do it first way. If you can do it first, you can do it first way. You every variable make that the one. But in here, this is the first day's day. It's real deal, it's taking today's day, and it's taking to what? To the current day of the week. This is just set the number of items to zero. It's used later. You can do it like this. If this is too confusing, right? Well, it generates this for you. It generates this by itself. But what you ask in the workshop is to add this piece, right? You are asked to add this piece is a name. name. Uh, this is too hard. If this is too hard, right? You can do. You can close this. You can do it like this. You can do set function. This is it. It will do it. It will generate code for you. Does it help? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope it helps. You can do it this way. Much easier. Okay. It's easier than school. But this is just the syntax. Okay. And then on the email, right, when you enter the email, you check how many times you entered one email. Email me. Okay. She is required to enter email. Then I click here. And if it recognizes the email, then it's okay. If not, it's going to check how many times you have tried before. Right? So if I try mm, twice before, right? She just I try more than once or try twice, it's gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's gonna do it. Or otherwise it's gonna end one, see? It's gonna check how many times I try to enter the email and it will stop. But for your assignment, all slots must have numbers, okay? Any other questions? Can you hear me right now? I don't know what's going on. Right now, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Was it problem the whole session? Or just... Okay. No, it, 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 it wasn't the whole session. Okay, good. I don't know what's going on. When I speak for a while, well, because the way Zoom is now, it's trying to cut the voice. For some reason, when I talk for a while, it looks at me as a noise. I don't know why. I could not figure it out. Okay. Any other questions? Anything else? Going once, going twice. No? Go ahead and ask if you have something. Or you can unmute yourself and ask also. No? Okay. If there are no questions, then we're going to call it a night and uh, good luck. Enjoy the assignment. <laughs>